Hey friends, welcome back. We have been learning a lot of one API contents in the past few weeks and I have been delivering uh, video lectures on that. So today we are going to discuss one DNN and I will also let you know how do you set things in the dev cloud for you to start building one DNN projects. Before we go deeper into what is one DNN way of doing it, how do we do it, we need to know what exactly is one DNN. It is nothing but Intel One API Deep Neural Networking Library and it provides you with the implementation of deep learning building blocks. This is open source, cross platform library, and the developers have a free hand to use the APIs for the CPU and the GPU. With this library, you can improve the performance of the frameworks that you are already using and you are very much aware of, like the OpenVINO, like the AI Analytics Toolkit, the Intel distribution for the PyTax, and TensorFlow. This is going to help you in faster development as well as optimized building block development. You can deploy applications optimized for the Intel CPUs and GPUs without having required to write any target specific code under this. That's the best part of it. What kind of applications can you build? Which domains can you go ahead deeper with one DNA? It has got a plethora of options for you, and the first one is image classification. You can use one DNA for image classification applications with CNN kind of stuff. You can also go ahead with object detection. You can use YOLO, faster RCNN, all this can be done and you can implement the object detection models. Natural language processing can also be tried and one team can be used to implement the deep learning models for NLP tasks such as the sentiment analysis and named entity recognition, lang language translation, all this can be done with NLP also and one DNN supports you doing that. And speech recognition is also possible, you can build speech recognition applications also. One DNN can be used to implement the deep learning models for speech recognition tasks, which are like the automatic speech recognition, speaker identification, all this can be done. And the recommender systems can also be built. You can suggest products, you can suggest content to the users based on their preferences and the historical usage. So image classification, object detection, NLP, speech recognition, recommender systems and more can be done with one DNN. But all this to be done, you need to set up the environment clearly. I am going to help you with that process and this is all going to be implemented. It's all going to be shown to you right now in the dev tool. The only thing that you've got to do is you must have got the dev cloud account enabled. You must have got the dev cloud account created already and I will walk you through the process step by step. It's a very simple thing and it's not going to be really tough. Let us go through the process right now step by step. Now, the moment you get in into the dev cloud, you will be having this button on the left hand side, which you can see here, it is called as launcher. So, you are seeing that there are three notebooks available here, notebook options available here for TensorFlow, Python, and PyTouch. Similarly, console options, we have got terminal options. Now, what am I going to do is, I am going to link this terminal, and I will do the steps which can enable you to go ahead, set up the environment, create the necessary things for using these libraries from an API. All these things are going to be demonstrated to you step by step. Please follow the guidelines. I will give you these steps also in the uh, description section so that you can watch it and you can go ahead with it very clearly. I have created a directory already during my testing phase. YAML, one API is the directory name that I have created. And now I am going to navigate to the directory. That is the second step that I need to do. I have just created a directory by name YAML, one API. I have navigated to the directory. And what next? I have got a command here. We can see that the source option. It's going to do everything for you. It enables everything, whatever is needed. The company API environment is going to be set for you right now. And do not miss this step. This is very, very important step. Once I do that, you will get the complete environment set. Since I have already run this command, it is saying that all these things have been done already. But for the purpose of showing you, I'm going to go ahead with the forced execution. So I am redoing all these steps. The environment variables are going to be set. Everything is going to be set with respect to one API. And you can see that. The process is going on in front of you. You can see that all these libraries, all these things are getting set right now in front of you, and that's what is required. So, this step is very, very important. Do not miss it. I'll give you the steps in the description section so you can follow it up. But the next step, the next step is to go ahead and activate the base here. The Conda activate base is done. So, you could have seen that there is a change in the prompt here. You can see that immediately we have got this done. So this is the thing that can tell you that things are going right. So what the next step? The next step is going to create an additional kernel, IPOI kernel. We are going to pip install IPOI kernel and it can be used for the Jupyter Notebook. Is it mandatory? Yes, this is absolutely mandatory. And if this step is not done, remember, if this step is not done, 
you will not be able to use the enabled libraries through the previous step. So I am going to pip install IPY kernel right now for you. It may take time, just wait. So once it is done, you will be able to see a change in the launcher section itself and you will be able to see that. So now what I am going to do is, I am going to run the next step and after that you will be able to see the change in the launcher section where you will have one more option enabled for you. Now I am going to use this next command. We are going to enable the IPY. Now we are going to enable the IPY kernel for usage with this command. So once this is done, it's going to be very easy for you to go ahead and to see if everything is done right. So let's wait for the output. That's all it is done. Now let's go to the launcher. We have to wait for maybe a couple of uh, uh, seconds. And you will see that there will be an additional option that will come over here in this space. There are only three things available here, right? Now we will be able to see the fourth option available here because of the steps that we have done. I'm going to show you that right now. Just wait for a minute. It will be available. You can see that the 1API 2022.3.1 is available for you. You can click this and that's all. With this. You can go ahead and use all the new libraries, all the stuff. And you have the options here. You can enable the debugger. Everything can be done. And this is all very, very easy for you to do. I will give you the steps, guidelines in the description section. Follow it up and you will be able to. And coming to 1DNN. You have the steps here, pip install 1dnn-cpu-gomp, you can import it then, you can import OS with this command guidelines as well. I'll put this in the description section, refer it, try it out in case you have any difficulties. Let me know, I'll be happy to help you. Thank you very much for following my channel content, if you have any questions, please ask me, I'll be glad to assist. Thank you.